Well, good Friday to you. Thank you for joining us here again. The up front, we already got nine people watching. What a blessing that is. And it's good to see y'all on here. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you don't mind, if you could do me a favor, that's just for Brother Wesley, but if you would leave, uh, just say I'm watching or I'm here or I'm here and put the name of your home church, the name of your preacher, or something in the comments because I can just see how many people's looking at us and, and not who's actually there. And I'd love to know if you're watching. So if you leave us a comment, I can do that. But like it. If you'd like to, you can share this. And uh, we thank you so much for joining with us today. Looking forward just now starting a brand new year and uh, year number two of What a Friend Friday and looking at number 54 today. And we're excited about continuing on uh, here on social media. It's been a blessing to us and a blessing to some others I know. It's good to see Brother Isaiah on here, even though he potentially uh, broke my pulpit over in uh, the, uh, what do we call that, the sun, my Sunday school room, and I'm looking forever, broke my pulpit. Judgment's coming. All right, Brother Josh going to get us started today uh, with Thought from the Word of God. All right, Matthew chapter number 28 uh, is where we'll take our uh, text from today, uh, and if you get your Bibles and uh, turn over there, or you can follow along the screen here with, with Brother Wesley, I want to read a few verses to you. Uh, maybe uh, to put it in the context of the direction that I uh, I'd like to go this this morning I, I or afternoon rather I, I'm not taking this verse out of context whatsoever uh, it'll be completely in context but maybe uh, I'll read these other verses to you you'll kind of understand the direction uh, that I hope our thought can go uh, this this afternoon John chapter number three uh, in verse number thirty five the Bible says and Jesus answered verily verily I say unto thee uh, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Our pastor made a, made a comment uh, last this past Sunday morning uh, about the idea of, of man uh, must be born again. And he said there's so many people in the world, they, they hear that statement and yet they don't understand uh, what that means. Um, James put it this way in James chapter number 5. He says, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death. And notice the next statement, it says, and shall hide a multitude of, of sins. Uh, the idea that that's our job, that, that's what it's all about. It's about telling men, women, boys, and girls uh, about Jesus Christ. You know, it's more than just putting it uh, on a bumper sticker on your car and saying you must be born again or, or putting it on your church sign. Uh, and those are all good things, uh, but we need to take it to the next level and, and maybe to the next step. Uh, Luke put it this way. He said, And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out in the highways and hedges and compel, that's a big word, uh, compel them to come in uh, that my house may be filled. Uh, I'd like to look at, at the idea of a brand new year. Uh, you know, this is our first back to normal. I was out of town last week. And uh, actually, I, wasn't, I was out of town, but I was stuck in a parking lot on 75. <laughs> but, um, as far as last week, this is our first, uh, to me, feels like normal. Uh, broadcast back on What a Friend Friday, and I'm sure a lot of you have made New Year's resolutions and you've got big plans uh, for this year, but uh, probably I'm sure like I've done and, and we've done over and over again, we'll, we'll start out strong maybe uh, to lose weight or save money or, or maybe even read our Bible through in a year or pray every day or, or maybe three, four times a day, whatever your resolution is, and, and it'll last a week, two weeks, three weeks, maybe a month or two, and before long you fizzle out. Uh, and the, the issue is, reality is, we get inspired to do a whole lot of things. Uh, you start out with a brand new year and say we, we, we get to start fresh and we get to start new. Uh, it's like every time we start a diet, we always want to start it on Sunday, uh, to start at the beginning of the week, so we'll gorge ourselves Friday and Saturday uh, ahead of time. Uh, the, the idea is we get inspired, but we never get determined uh, to do anything. Uh, and I'd like to talk about that just a little bit today. Uh, our theme for a uh, camp meeting coming up this year, Brother Jack and I was talking about just this this week and kind of settled on that. Uh, Brother Jack made a comment uh, Sunday Sunday night uh, of the new year about the word renew uh, in 2022. We're going to go that direction this year. Uh, and I believe the only way to do that in our hearts and in our lives is to get back to the basics of the word of God and the reality of what God's called us to do and what God wants us to do. Uh, and in order to do that, I believe we got to start with our power source. Uh, Matthew chapter number 28 uh, is where we'll draw today. Uh, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 28, you know these verses, it's the Great Commission. He said, Go ye therefore and, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And he said, Lo, I'll be with you always, even unto the end of the world. 
Uh, we have the gospel. Uh, we have that which can make the difference in the heart and life of every person in the entire world. Uh, we're getting to the place in life to where I believe church has become mechanical. Uh, we, we, we go through the, the motions and we go through the routine of it all and, and uh, we, we go through uh, what we call a religious activity. Uh, but I believe we've gotten away from the most important thing uh, and that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. I heard a fellow preach one time and he said it's gotten to the place it seems like in churches that we don't have anything anymore, that, that all we have is the gospel. And he was saying it in a negative tone. Uh, and I, I remember getting back on the bus with my young people and, and I said, I want you all to disregard everything that you've heard tonight uh, because the gospel is exactly what we need and it's exactly what we have. The Bible says it's the power of God uh, in, in the book of 1 Corinthians to them that believe. Uh, that's to you and us that save. It's still the power of God. Acts chapter number 1, the Bible says that he gave us power uh, to be witnesses. Uh, do you understand that we, we do not give the gospel of Jesus Christ? We lose our power uh, as far as our Christian life and the victorious Christian life that we could be living. We lose that across the board. Uh, whether it's dealing with personal sin in our life or, or whether it's battling depression or anxiety uh, or our level of faith, uh, all the power that we could have and all the power that we have access to can be destroyed when we become a stagnant pond that only takes things in and we never give anything out. It's our job uh, to give the gospel. The gospel is that which gives man hope. It can change hearts and lives uh, and take that which is broken and, and heal it. It's that which uh, can take a, a life that's in ruin uh, that, that is and completely distraught. It looks absolutely destroyed and it can make it whole again. It's the gospel that changes the lives of hearts all over the globe. And I believe today that we've gotten away from the simplicity of the gospel. I believe that we've gotten to the place where preachers now write sermons to impress rather than to see hearts and lives change. We look for a pat on the back from a preacher rather than we see a heart and life come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. I understand you and I are to give the gospel for the glory of God. I'm not looking for results. Results are looking at are left up to God. I can't save anybody, but I can give a message that can change the life of anyone in the entire world. And I am thankful for the gospel. But it's one thing to have a resolution and to say, I'm going to give the gospel. I'm going to try my best to make a difference by sharing the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. But it's altogether different to make the decision and then to actually put it into practice. And to do it, I'd like to give you it's an old outline, but it's a simple outline, and and I hope maybe that that something you can remember and and maybe apply to your life. Uh, I, I was reading a book one time. This is not mine. I I borrowed it from somebody else, and and the question was posed in the book is what is the purpose of the church? Uh, and, and the fellow went in there and he wrote all about the purpose of the church and and what's going on in the church and why the church is here, and and then he broke down other ministries of the church. He he broke down the Sunday school department and the youth department and the church choir and and and, and the visitation program and, and all of these things. And by the time you got down to the end of his book, you realized that it was all the same. The, the ministry and the, the job of the, the choir, and the, the ministry and the job of the, the usher and the, the deacon and the, the maybe the trustee or the youth department and the, the Sunday school department, it's all the same. It's, it's the idea that we are taking the gospel of Jesus Christ and we're giving it to every single person that we possibly can. And I'd like to take the, maybe this great commission today and, and break it down to you very, very simply. What is the purpose of the church? What is our purpose? What, what is it that I, uh, as a Christian, as a believer, ought to be doing in my life? May I say this today, the first thing you ought to be doing in your life is evangelizing sinners. You know, I'll ask you a question today. I, uh, Brother Bob asked this question on What a Friend Friday last year, and and it's just resonated. I think I wrote it in the front of every Bible that I use regularly. And it's just resonated through my heart uh, since he asked the question. He said, how do you test yourself spiritually? And then he made this statement. You can test yourself spiritually by who you're praying for to get saved. You see, so often we spend time in prayer. We'll bless our food. We'll ask God to bless our home and, and bless our children, our career, uh, maybe our family. Uh, but if we want to look at our spiritual gauge in life, who are you praying for to get saved? You see, it's our job to evangelize a lost and dying world. 
When's the last time you passed out a gospel tract? When's the last time you went out of the way to share your story of how God made a difference in your heart and in your life? According to Matthew chapter number 28, it's our job to evangelize sinners. But it's not just the fact that we're giving them the gospel. We want to see them take that gospel and apply it to their life. We do that through confrontational soul winning. You know, so often as a preacher, we get uh, enthralled and, enthr and, and, and thrilled about the pulpit. And, and I love preaching as much as anybody else. It's my life's passion. I absolutely love preaching. Uh, but dear friend, do you understand if you look at Jesus and his ministry, yes, we see some the greatest sermons that have ever been preached was preached by the greatest preacher, Jesus Christ. But we look at his ministry. He had a ministry of one-on-one. -on -one. He went out of his way to talk to a woman at a well. He went out of his way to talk to one maniac in Gadara. And over and over again, we see him dealing with a ministry of one-on-one. -on -one. It's our job to evangelize sinners through the confrontation of the gospel. Preaching demands a verdict. And you and I must demand a verdict. Offer the gospel and demand a decision. Let them accept or reject Jesus Christ. It's our job to evangelize the sinner. But notice in our text, it doesn't stop there. He, he, he gives it real plain. He said, go ye therefore into all nations. But then he says, baptizing them. We don't get baptized till after we, we get saved. You see, we evangelize sinners. Then we baptize the saints. Paul put it this way in Romans chapter number 6. He says, therefore we are buried with him by bapti baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of God the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Do you understand this idea of baptism is an outward sign of an inward change? We don't, we don't get baptized in order to be saved. We get baptized because we are saved. And we're baptized into the fellowship uh, of the family of God. We're baptized in the local church. Uh, we have folks get uh, join Maryville Baptist Church and, and they'll come to the front and ask to join the church. First question they're going to get asked about church membership is whether or not they've ever been saved, whether or not they've ever trusted Christ as their Lord and Savior. The second question they're going to get asked is whether or not they've ever been baptized. That's the first commandment we're given after we get saved is to follow the Lord in believer's baptism. And if they've not been, we baptism into the fellowship of Maryville Baptist Church. You see, that the reality is a lot of times we'll give the gospel to somebody and then we'll just turn and walk away and feel like we've done our part. But that's not what the Bible says. He says, go ye therefore, and he goes a little farther than that. He says, teaching all nations, and he says, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Now, I want you to get this. We evangelize sinners. We baptize saints. And I'm going to borrow a word that you might not like. And if it bothers you too much and, and it's too religious for you, go back and check out some of our earlier episodes and you'll know exactly where we stand. But just for alliteration's sake, we evangelize sinners and we baptize saints and then we catechize servants. I know that the Catholic Church has taken off with that word, but that word catechize just simply means to teach. You see, it's not our responsibility just to give the gospel and just to see somebody get baptized. We're not to lead them and, and leave them. We're to lead them and then begin to love them and teach them in the Word of God. I believe that's why Sunday school is so important. If you're, if you're not in Sunday school and you're not involved in a Sunday school program, uh, you ought to be. You ought to be in there learning about the Word of God, uh, how to take that Word of God, apply that Word of God to your life, and allow God to make a difference uh, in your heart and in your life. So often, I believe we face so many battles and so many circumstances that we could go through uh, fully loaded, uh, our guns fully loaded for battle, but we go through and we have the gun, but it's not fully loaded because we only have this or we have a little bit of that because we've not spent time in the Word of God. You see, we're to lead somebody to Christ, but then we're to watch them and see them grow in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. That's the purpose of the church. But I, I want to get on this today, and, and all this has really been by way of introduction. Uh, this is what I want to give you uh, today. I'd like to give you the conclusion of it all. Romans chapter number uh, 10. I'm going to skip some of this just for, for time's sake. But Romans chapter number 10. We, we evangelize sinners. That's what we're supposed to do. Um, COVID has tried to prevent it, uh, but the Lord always makes a way. Uh, the government's tried to prevent it, but God still makes a way. Uh, as of yesterday, uh, our church, since we began uh, at the beginning of 2019, as of yesterday, we've passed out 13,000 Bibles. 
uh, in our uh, our local area. Uh, as of yesterday, we, we, we hit that point uh, as far as what we've passed out. And we give the gospel. The Bible says that word of God will not return void. We're evangelizing the sinner. Our baptistry waters have been troubled all last year in 2021. We've seen people go through the baptistry and join our church, our Sunday school program. We've watched it grow and we've seen God do some great things in our Sunday school program. But I, I want you to get this. Romans chapter number 10 and verse number 11. The Bible says this. For whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. The same Lord over all is rich unto them that call upon him. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so often we take those verses of Scripture and we embrace them and we tell folks they need to be born again. They need to be saved. And that's a wonderful thing. But once they get saved, they need to get baptized. And once they get baptized... They, they need to get into Sunday school and they need to become a part of the local church. They begin to need to, they need to begin to grow uh, in, in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, but we don't need to stop reading there. Notice verse number 14. The Bible says, How then shall they call on uh, him in whom they've not believed? And how shall they believe in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? You see, we're not just supposed to evangelize sinners and baptize saints and, and catechize servants, but we must mobilize soldiers. We must get boots on the ground. We must step out and get the job done. I want to ask you today, Christian, have you been praying for somebody to get saved? Uh, have, have you got to the place in life to where you're ready to put your prayer into action? You know, it's, it's just like the farmer that prayed for rain, but he never packed an umbrella. You know, he, he prayed and prayed, but he never really anticipated or expected God to do anything. I believe, dear friend, that it's got to go beyond the fact that we pray that somebody gets saved. It's got to go to the place where we begin to beg God to allow us to have the opportunity to be the one to make the difference, to carry the message that was brought to us, to, to, to bring the message of hope, help, and healing through the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Or maybe today you're listening today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Can I tell you today, the Bible says that today is the day of salvation and harden not your heart. Romans chapter number 3 and verse number 10 includes every single one of us. He says, as it is written, there's none righteous, no, not one. Not a single righteous person on the face of the earth. You and I are all sinners and we're all doomed to hell because of our sin. But Jesus Christ made the difference. The Bible says that he bled and he died and he paid my sin debt and he paid your sin debt. And now we have the opportunity by faith to trust him and have his grace and mercy applied to our life so that we can go to a place called heaven. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I hope today that you made a resolution, a spiritual resolution, something that's real in your heart this very hour, this day, that you want to carry the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I hope it goes from, from just a, a resolution to resolve, a place of determination where you are determined to take the gospel and share it every single opportunity you're given. You know, I, I believe this. I, I, I've heard some folks say it, and I've heard some folks disagree with it, and, and that's all right, but I don't know that you can give the gospel to the wrong person. I've heard folks say that I don't believe you could ever knock on the wrong door or, or give a gospel tract uh, to the wrong person. I, I'm not going to say I disagree with any of that, uh, but I can tell you this. I don't believe you can give the gospel to the wrong person. I got saved at five years old, 32 years ago, in children's church. Uh, Lord glorious and marvelously saved me. As a five-year-old little boy, uh, I believe is the first time I ever heard and understood the gospel the way that I did. I grew up in a Christian home. I was around it. There's never been... Uh, Sunday that I, I, I we've, our family's not been in church, always been in Sunday school, been in church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, grew up in a preacher's home. Uh, and, and I was around those things all the time. And at, at an early age, as God convicted my heart, uh, I, I was saved and I trusted Christ uh, and God saved me. And my faith and hope and my salvation experience is on the fact that I've done exactly what the Bible said. And it's not that the lady that dealt with me told me that I was saved. It's the fact that the word of God uh, declared that, that, that I am a saved man. And that was some 32 years ago. But I want you to understand this. 32 years have gone by. And I have had an obligation. I have had a debt to give that glorious message of the gospel to every single person possible. 
And I'll just be honest with you, there's been so many times that I've failed to hold up my end of the bargain. Do you understand today? We have that which will make the difference in every heart and every life. I believe when it comes to our salvation experience, many of us have gotten over it. We've gotten past it. We've taken it for granted. We, we look at life and we, we base our joy. Uh, we get it confused with happiness. And we base, we base our joy uh, and our happiness based on the, the experiences that we're having at the time and the environment that we're in. But do you understand today that our peace and our joy, the Bible says it passes all understanding because it's rooted in Jesus Christ, the one that can make an eternal difference in our heart and in our life. I encourage you today, give somebody the gospel and do it on purpose. I am for confrontational soul winning, confronting those with Jesus Christ, giving them a chance to accept him or reject him. You can plant a seed. And I'll tell you today at 32 years old, if somebody come by my way and told me the story, though I heard it at five years old like I've never heard it before, I can tell you today some 32 years later as a 37-year-old man, I can still tell you the gospel is still as powerful, it's still as real, and it's still as exciting in my heart, in my life today as it ever has been. The best sermons I've ever heard in my life are the gospel message. Dear friend today, don't ever get over the gospel of Jesus Christ. Pray for somebody to get saved, but go beyond prayer. Ask God to allow you to be the one to make a difference and carry the message in their life and make the difference in there. Listen, let me give you this. I'm trying to close. Listen, let, let me give you this. I'll be completely honest with you today the best I can. If we're not careful, old-fashioned soul winning people, it's gone out of style. Nobody wants to confront anybody else with the gospel. We live in a generation of a social gospel. We believe in a generation of, of what they call easy believism and all those things. It still takes repentance in order for a man to be saved. And it still takes the word of God in order for a man to be saved. And don't get away from it. Take the word of God. Share it with somebody every single chance that you get. You'll have joy like you never thought you'd have before. Hey Amen. I agree. I think that's great. I was sitting and thinking as he was going over some of the, these things and and a statement I heard Brother Josh say, I believe it was Brother Josh not too long ago, I was preaching two of the most uh, fundamental or essential things of being a Christian are praying and reading your Bible. And for today's sake, we'll throw a third one in there, and that's witnessing, right? Those are the, the three essentials of being Christ-like, uh, praying, reading your Bible, and witnessing to other people. However, though the, those are the, the fundamentals, the, you know, the most basic of things that we could do. So oftentimes they're also the most neglected. Man, we need to, to get back to prayer and Bible reading and witnessing to people. Uh, what a truth. What a truth we looked at today. Reminds me of the words written in Revelation chapter number three um, to the church of, of Sardis, where he simply said, strengthen the things that remain. Hope this song's a blessing to you.
All righty, thank you for tuning in again with us here for What a Friend Friday in the Upper Room. Got a few announcements to go over with you and a couple big ones, so don't tune off just yet. Uh, January the 30th, which is the fifth Sunday night of this month, Brother David Epps, a good friend of ours here at Maryville Baptist Church, going to be preaching for us that Sunday afternoon, and we are looking forward to that. February the 5th, I believe that would be 10 a.m. Mm-hmm. Uh, on Saturday, February the 5th, the uh, Salt and Pepper Fellowship is going to the Lighthouse Restaurant, and uh, that'll be a, a good time, and you're welcome to go with us. And then um, March the 11th and March the 12th, I told you last week, tell you again this week, and Lord willing, every week from now till it happens, be the Young Preachers Fellowship. I believe this is the fourth one that we've had here, and uh, that doesn't seem right, but it is. I, I'm, I'm positive that that's right. The fourth annual uh, Young Preachers Fellowship here at Maryville Baptist Church. Got several good preachers coming in to be with us. Uh, but we want you to come, especially especially if you're a young preacher. We would love for you to be here with us. Pack an outline with you. You're invited. Uh, we'll have church at 7 o'clock Friday night, and then we'll have church again at 10 a.m. Saturday morning. We'll break at about noon and eat some good food. And then about 1 o'clock, we'll come back to church and, and have church till about 3. Uh, Brother Todd McKeon is the only person that I have promised to preach, I believe. And uh, Brother Todd is going to be closing us out uh, each service. Uh, that is Friday night and then Saturday afternoon. Uh, he'll be closing us out, preaching twice. And so make sure you hear from that. That'll be a blessing to you, I'm sure. And then one other big announcement is this. We have decided, and after seeking some counsel from some people who know a whole lot more about social media things than I do, uh, we have decided that we are going to switch uh, the way that we are doing What a Friend Friday this year. And uh, we're going to do it, looks like probably the first Friday in March is how it's going to fall and we are going to only stream on YouTube. All right, there are a, quite a few reasons for this, and we'll not go into all of them, but that's what we're going to do. So here's what we need you to do. Uh, if you know some other people who watch this and you didn't see them on here watching with you today, you should probably let them know that, hey, What a Friend Friday is moving to just YouTube. Now we still got several weeks between now and then. Hopefully everybody will get the message. But in the meantime, you can go ahead and start watching on YouTube. You can go and find our YouTube channel, What a Friend Friday. You can subscribe to it. And that way you get all the notifications when we go live on Fridays and Saturdays and special meetings and things like that. And that should be a blessing to you as well as a blessing to us. And we are still going to use our Facebook page to post things, share our videos from YouTube, but we are going to only stream from YouTube. So make sure you get over to our channel and subscribe to us there. That would be wonderful. Is there anything else we're missing? There's somebody at Maryville Baptist Church that loves you and love to see you come to church here with us. We have church at 10 a.m. Sunday school on Sunday, 11 a.m. worship service, 6 p.m. Sunday night service, 7 o'clock Wednesday night prayer and Bible study. We'd love to see you here for any or all of those services. Of course, if you can't make it here, we understand. If you need help finding a home church, we can help you with that. If you'll just send us a message. We'll do our best to find you one. Uh, we'll have preaching and reaching in the morning at 11. Make sure you tune in for it. And uh, great message. I've already heard the message, and it's a great message, and you want to hear it. So make sure you tune in at 11 in the morning. That would be a blessing to you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, go to church. For he is the rock of hope.